Mumbai is changing like never before. With a series of projects slated for completion before 2030, Mumbai's growth is comparable to New York's. However, unlike New York, where new projects are launched without an actual need, Mumbai has some valid reasons. The first and foremost is its population. The present-day Mumbai was created by joining together seven islands, where only three million people lived by 1950. The region now hosts 21 million people. This is more than the entire population of countries like Romania and the Netherlands. The biggest problem for a place like this is its traffic. A staggering majority of Mumbai is dependent on public transport like buses, metro, and trains. Those who use the road are stuck for hours during peak hours. So a 30-minute journey will take you 20 additional minutes on the roads of Mumbai. To make matters worse, the number of vehicles in the region has increased by 100% in the last 10 years. While the vehicle population steadily grew, Mumbai couldn't add new roads at the same pace. And that's because of its unusual geography. It's bound by the sea on three sides, giving it an elongated, triangular shape. This makes it harder to construct more roads and highways along its width. The only solution left is to create new roads along the coast. So that's what India is doing. It's building a coastal road that stretches 29 kilometers from south to north Mumbai. Currently, only two major highways connect the north and south, the Western Express Highway and the Eastern Express Highway. Adding an eight-lane coastal road will significantly reduce congestion at these routes. It is estimated that around 130,000 vehicles will use the coastal road daily. The project has two main portions. The northern end spans from Kandivali to Bandrawarli Sea Link. Meanwhile, the south part connects the Bandrawarli Sea Link to the Princess Street flyover. But it won't be like any ordinary road. It will have 70 hectares of land entirely dedicated to green space. This will lower the city's pollution levels and offer scenic views to passengers using the road. The design also includes a 7.5 kilometers continuous promenade from Breach Candy to Worli. Travelers can use this space for cycling, jogging, and other physical activities. There are also plans to include butterfly parks, cycle tracks, and open theaters. At this point, you might be wondering, how can a coastal road have enough space for all this? Well, Mumbai is solving this problem by extending its shore. This is done through a process called land reclamation, which many sea-facing countries have used. The process is simple. About 10 million tons of rock and other materials were dumped into the sea to create a solid foundation for the road. The famous man-made islands of Dubai are created in the exact same way. To further enhance connectivity, the coastal road will include two dedicated lanes specifically for buses. Various bus stops and interchanges will be strategically placed along the road to facilitate easy access for commuters. Key interchanges will likely be located at major junctions such as Breach Candy, Mahalaxmi, Haji Ali, and Worli. Once the road reaches Gurgaon, it transitions into an underwater tunnel. That's because the Malabar Hills provide an obstacle to the conventional route. Engineers develop twin tunnels that reach up to a depth of 72 meters beneath the hills. But as you can guess, digging two tunnels of this scale requires extreme power. To do this task, engineers used a 28,000 tons tunnel boring machine called Mavala. It's the biggest one of its type in India. In fact, it was shipped in 70 containers and took six months to assemble its component. Mavala made a record for excavating 456.72 meters of rock in a month. According to the government, the coastal road will save time by 70% and also reduce fuel consumption by 34%. If you live in Mumbai, you know that time moves at a fast pace. The coastal road will give its residents a much-needed break from the congested city routes. The south portion connecting Worli to Marine Drive was inaugurated on March 11, 2024. According to Maharashtra Chief Minister Eknath Shinde, the coastal road will be extended to Versova and in the future to Bhayander, Virar, and Palgar. In the long run, many retail and commercial businesses will relocate to the region, causing huge economic returns for India. The coastal road does have irrefutable benefits for long-distance travel. But what about the city center? 
How can the government reduce congestion in the mainstream routes? Mumbai currently has three metro lines, the blue line, the yellow, and the red line. Together, they cover a distance of approximately 46.5 kilometers with 43 stations. The Mumbai Metropolitan Authority plans to add around 1,000 new buses to enhance public transport connectivity. Moreover, nine additional lines are already under various stages of construction. The notable ones include Line 3, or Aqua. It will bridge the gap between South Mumbai's leading business districts and the western suburbs. Aqua will have 26 underground stations and one at-grade station. This makes it Mumbai's first underground metro. Line Aqua will pass through key areas like Bandra Kurla Complex and the Mumbai Airport. The project's first phase became operational in July 2024. By 2031, it is anticipated that around 1.7 million passengers will use the Aqua Line daily, making it a vital component of Mumbai's public transport network. But unlike Line Aqua, which is fully underground, the Orange Line, or Line 5, will be above ground. The metro will run on an elevated corridor, connecting the suburbs of Thane, Biwandi, and Kalyan. Covering a distance of 25 kilometers, it will have 17 stations along its route with an approximate cost of $1 billion. Much like the Orange Line, Line 6 or the Pink Line will also run on an elevated path. Recent footage shows that the gray structure is already laid out and the first phase is expected to come live by 2025. Building a metro on an elevated path is a great way of saving ground space and ensuring that there's no congestion on the main road. If you liked the video so far, kindly take a moment to subscribe to our channel. We bring the latest news in the construction industry with two new videos each week. Enough with promotion, let's get back to the video. Until now, we discuss projects that are within the limits of Mumbai. To improve Mumbai's accessibility to outsiders, the state governments of Maharashtra and Gujarat agreed on a high-speed corridor between Mumbai and Ahmedabad. It made sense to connect these two cities. After all, Mumbai is the financial hub of India, and Ahmedabad is the largest city in the state of Gujarat. Around 400,000 people travel daily between these two places. Seeing the huge demand, a 500-kilometer rail track is being constructed with 12 stations in between. The trains will operate at speeds of up to 320 km kilometers h, cutting down travel time from 7 to 2 hours. Once completed, it will be India's first high-speed rail line. India has one of the largest rail networks in the world, with a total route length exceeding 64,000 kilometers and more than 7,000 railway stations. However, it didn't have a high-speed rail line until now. Indian Railways proposed to operate two types of services on the corridor. A rapid train service that stops at only two stations and a slower service that stops at all stations. The rapid train would complete the journey in two hours and seven minutes, while the slower service would take three hours. The entire project is estimated to cost India $15 billion. $12 billion will be financed through a series of loans from Japan. And this is great for a nation like India, as Japan is the leading authority on high-speed trains. India will import 24 Shinkansen train sets from Japan. The first section connecting Surat to Bilimora will open to the public by August 2026, while the full completion will take place in 2028. But beyond roads and buses, Mumbai is aiming for something higher. The government is building a brand new $2 billion airport at Navi Mumbai. It's strategically positioned just 35 kilometers from Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj Airport, which is the second busiest airport in the country. In the last two to three years, it has been handling 40, 50 million passengers every year. To cater to the growing demand in a city like Mumbai, the need for a second international airport is evident. Navi Mumbai is a place where there is plenty of land available and is relatively more planned. Hence, it was the preferred choice for an international airport. The airport will feature two parallel runways, each measuring 3,700 meters long and 60 meters wide. However, the airport isn't just about utility, it will be a landmark on its own. It's designed by the internationally acclaimed Zaha Hadid Architects. The terminal buildings are shaped like the lotus flower, India's national emblem. The airport will feature three interconnected terminal buildings, 
Each terminal would be equipped with a variety of amenities like food courts, retail and duty-free shops, lounges, and duty-free stations. Its fluid design minimizes vertical transport systems, ensuring smooth passenger across terminals. The first phase will accommodate 25 million passengers annually, while the final phase will handle up to 90 million passengers. Navi Mumbai Airport will be easily accessible via road, metro rail, and suburban railways. It connects the Navi Mumbai Metro Line 1 and the Mumbai Metro Line 8. The creation of an international airport will attract several hospitality and retail investments in the region. The airport is part of a larger vision under initiatives like the Gati Shakti Yojana. This is an initiative by Prime Minister Narendra Gandhi that seeks to revolutionize transport infrastructure across the whole nation. The airport will first open its doors by March 2025. Once operational, the number of travelers between Mumbai and Navi Mumbai will rise drastically. Indians would need a better and faster access between the two cities. For this reason, two projects have been introduced, the Mumbai Trans Harbor Link and Third Thane Creek Bridge. The Mumbai Trans Harbor Link was opened earlier in 2024 and is crowned as India's longest sea bridge. It connects the south of Mumbai to Navi Mumbai via a 22-kilometer route. Since its opening, this bridge has cut down travel time from two hours to a mere 20 minutes. The project is 80% funded by the Japan International Cooperation Agency, costing a whopping $2.1 billion. The Trans Harbor boosts a six-lane road that can handle up to 70,000 vehicles per day. In the same fashion, the third Thane Creek Bridge will also add six additional lanes to the already existing Bridge 2. Three lanes will be added on both sides of Bridge 2, resulting in a total of 12 lanes. It's relatively more inexpensive to expand an existing bridge than making one from scratch. Moreover, it would require way less concrete and other building materials, making the process sustainable. The second Thane Bridge handles currently up to 200,000 vehicles daily. This will increase the bridge's capacity while promising faster travel. The construction of the third Thane Bridge wasn't easy. In fact, it has faced several setbacks over the years. Initially, set to begin in September 2018, the construction was postponed because of the need for environmental clearances. To continue construction, 430 mangroves had to be cleared to make space for equipment. Bombay High Court eventually gave clearance for mangrove removal in 2020. Unfortunately, by that time, COVID had already started and the entire construction industry was affected. The timeline was pushed back further due to the pandemic. But that wasn't the end of the project's worries. The fishermen community protested against the construction as it would affect their fishing activity. The cleared mangroves were pivotal in supporting marine ecology and hence the fishing cycle. Finally, the court had to intervene and award each family 100,000 Indian rupees in compensation. Now that all legal hurdles are clear, the third Thane Bridge is being constructed at a rapid pace. The first three lanes will open to traffic by the end of September 2024, while the remaining three will open up next year. If you live in Mumbai and are watching this video, what do you think about these projects? Share your thoughts in the comments. Anyway, thanks for watching and we'll catch up in the next video.